welcome to the 3ABN Worship Hour. My name is John Dinsey. It's a pleasure for me to be with you during this hour. And we invite you to sing along and also pray with us, but also to study God's Word together. Before we study God's Word, I am delighted that my brother Tim Parton is here and he is going to lead you in singing and prayer. Thank you, Brother Tim. Thank you, Johnny. I'm so grateful for the Word of God. Promises in His Word that we can hold on to, that we can claim. He is our faithful Father. And in 1 John 4, 4, it says, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because He who is in you is greater than He who is in the world. Father, I do belong to You. You have given me the victory over my enemies simply because you are in me and you are greater than he who is in the world. So I sing victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere i knew him and all my love is due him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood i heard about his healing of his cleansing power revealing how he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see and then i cried dear jesus come and heal my broken spirit and somehow jesus came and brought to me the victory the psalmist said in psalm 60 verse 11 and 12 give us help from trouble for the help of man is useless but through god we will do valiantly for it is he who shall tread down our enemies father i claim that i do not go into battle alone i go with you god you go with me, and you give me victory, and you trample down my enemies. Psalm 44, verses 6 and 7 says, I will put no trust in my bow. My sword does not bring me victory, but you, God, you give us victory over our enemies. You put our adversaries to shame. So you can claim that today. I don't trust human strategies for victory. I trust in you, God. You are the God of victory who helped me to defeat my enemies and my adversaries run in shame. We know that there are so many of our viewers who are emailing and calling us with prayer requests. We take those requests seriously. Father God, Again, we come to you. You are the answer to our needs. You are our great provider. So, Father, I just ask in Jesus' name, Lord, that you would meet the needs of those who are watching. Such varied and uh, wide are, are the range of needs, the, the physical needs, God spiritual needs, the mental, emotional. Father, we need you. We need your healing touch. But we know, God, that you can bring us victory. We know that you're, you are able. You are powerful. So I'm asking in Jesus' name that you would meet the needs of your people. We're depending on you. You are our only hope. Father, we rely on you to be our source of victory. 
and we will be faithful to give you the praise. I've got victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is due. Plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, we have that victory in Jesus, and that victory can be yours today, can be yours right now, if you let Jesus come into your heart. And he's calling you today to allow him in that he may live in you and give you the victory. Before we begin our study, I'd like to go to the Lord in prayer once again. I'd like to invite you to pray for yourself and pray for all the people that are joining us all over the world through radio, television, the Internet, whatever means that may be. Let's go to the Lord in prayer together and ask him for his blessing. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that we have this time to study the Holy Scriptures, to study your Word. And Heavenly Father, we come before you in Jesus' name to ask for your blessing upon each person that is joining us. We pray that your Holy Spirit will illuminate our minds, help us to understand, and we pray that you will draw us close to you. I place myself in your hands, Lord. Bless me with your Holy Spirit. Bless everyone with your Holy Spirit that we may understand your words. I ask of you, Lord, that every word will come from your throne of grace. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God is good to each and every person. And as we study together, I hope you will realize that God is not surprised but by whatever means, whatever things take place in this world. Our study begins in the book of Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. And I take you to the scenes that when Jesus and his disciples were in the temple, that they were so impressed with the buildings and the stones. It's, it was an awesome sight. And in Matthew chapter 24, beginning in verse 1, we have these words. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now, in Matthew 24, verse 3, something interesting happens because the disciples wanted to know about this. They said, uh, verse 3, Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Here the disciples wanted to know, what, 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 is, what, is, what does all this mean? To them, the fact that the temple stones and the buildings will be thrown down meant to them that that would be the end of the world. And Jesus mercifully blended the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem with the signs of the end and of his coming in his explanation. So as we look at some verses here in the book of Matthew chapter 24, we're not going to focus a lot on the signs and uh, every detail of the signs because there is something here that people miss, I believe, to their detriment because they, they focus in on the signs and the signs and the signs. And there's a message here from Jesus that we all need to understand. And I hope that today it is my prayer that you will see this as we study 
together. Now, wouldn't you love to have the opportunity that the disciples had to ask Jesus the same question? When shall these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming? Lord, we're going through this now. What, what's going to happen next? You know, the invitation of Jesus is still open for us today. Remember, Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. But let's go to Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and 30. 28 through 30, actually, Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30. And we're going to see there an invitation from Jesus that is for us today as well. Notice, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Notice this. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. And the next verse says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You see, in this scripture, Jesus tells us that we can come to him and learn from him because he is meek and lowly of heart. He says, learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly of heart. So, yes, we can come to Jesus and ask him, say, teach me, Jesus, teach me. Another promise is found to us in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33. And in Jeremiah, chapter 33, we have these wonderful words in verse 3. Call to me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. So the Lord gives, is, gives us an open invitation to learn from him, to call upon him, and he will indeed show us great and mighty things that we do not know. But we must come just as Jesus is, humble, with a learning spirit and a learning desire, asking the Lord to help us understand. Let's go to the, Matthew chapter 24 again and take up the reading there. In Matthew chapter 24, let's continue in verse 6. Verse 6. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. Notice here that the next verse says, all these are the beginning of sorrows. So, brothers and sisters, we have a message from Jesus that wars and rumors of wars, pestilences, and all these things are the beginning of sorrows. And we have entered into this throughout history. Even before uh, the destruction of Jerusalem, there were wars and rumors of wars. There were famines. There were earthquakes. All these things that Jesus said would happen, happened before the destruction of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD. But you see, these same signs are repeated in the time of the end because Jesus combined the two. And many things like happened before the destruction of Jerusalem happens for us in these last days that we are living in. So when you consider these things, these are the beginning of sorrows. We have been in the time of sorrows for many years. You may be able to look in history. I don't know how old you are, but think back 10, 20, 30 years, and you have seen an increase in tornadoes and hurricanes, earthquakes, fires in different places, we are living in the time of the end. We don't have enough time to show you how prophetically we are living in the last days, but these signs that Jesus spoke in Matthew 24, nearly all are fulfilled, and we are living in the last days. And of course, some uh, right now, uh, you may be in your home because of the coronavirus, and uh, this pandemic that is, it's incredible what has taken place. Virtually uh, about 100, over 180 countries, over 180 countries already have infections of the coronavirus. 100, 
in 80, more than 180 countries, actually. Thousands have died, and we are living in the last days. But I'd like to point out to you that this coronavirus is but a wake-up call to help God's people understand that we are living in the last days. Now, I want to go to one of my favorite psalms and read to you from Psalms 46. In Psalms 46, we have a message from the Lord that is very powerful, and we should understand that God has a message for us. Notice these words, verse 1 and 2. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Let's go to verse 3 also. Though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. So brothers and sisters, we can take refuge in God. And let, let, uh, don't, let it, don't be carried away with the fears of the world because God has exceeding great and precious promises. These are times for you and I to get closer to the Lord, closer to the Lord and have the assurance that what Jesus said is true. He said, I will be with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. I'd like to point to you another scripture that is of encouragement and that is found in Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10. In Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10, the Bible tells us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This is the God that we serve. This is the almighty God. And I encourage you to trust him with all your heart. Matthew uh, 24 is a powerful book to read. And we can learn many things there. But I want to show you another wonderful promise. In Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3 and 4. Isaiah 26, verse 3 and 4. Some people have this memorized. Notice these wonderful words in Isaiah 26, verse 3 and 4. You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for in Jehovah the Lord is everlasting strength. Praise God. He is our everlasting strength. We don't have to fear as long as we understand and believe that Jesus is with us. So I encourage you to believe, get familiar with the promises of God. This is a marvelous opportunity for you and I to sink deep into the Word of God and to uh, become closer to God and to have the assurance in our hearts that what He said, He will do. Remember, Jesus promised to be with you even until the end of the world. But you and I are facing, we're walking through this world and facing difficulties and problems and crisis. We must have our eyes fixed on Jesus if we are to survive till the end. We continue back in the book of Matthew chapter 24. And in Matthew 24, we are going to continue now into uh, verse 9. And 10, then they shall deliver you up to tri tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. These things happened during the time of the, dis uh, not the disciples, but after uh, Jesus spoke to the disciples, these things happened. Before the destruction of Jerusalem, which occurred in 70 A.D., these things happen, and these things will happen again. Notice that it says that people will betray one another. That's people that you know, people that you love may betray you. But you must have your eyes fixed on Jesus. Continuing on in Matthew 24, verse 11, Then many false prophets will arise and deceive many. 
this has been going on for years and will intensify as we get closer and closer to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Let's continue verse 12. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. He that endures to when? Till the end. Brothers and sisters, it is not enough to begin our Christian life with Jesus and then separate ourselves from Jesus and live a life of sin. We must continue and endure until the end. The end of what? It could be the end of our life, and it could be the end of time when we see Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven. Whatever it may be for you, I encourage you to be faithful until the end. Endure until the end through the power and the grace of Jesus Christ. Now, there's a verse that is one of the, I would say to you, one of the key scriptures to understand that Jesus Christ is coming soon. Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all nations for a, a witness. I'm sorry. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then the end shall come. So we have here this scripture that helps us understand a, a, something by which you can gauge. Hey, is the gospel of the kingdom being preached in all the world for witness unto all nations? And then the end shall come. And so for you and I that are facing this, this crisis right now, I have good news for you. The crisis will end. Why? Because right now, the current situation places some limitations as to how much you can do in preaching the gospel. Yes, right now, you can send stuff through the mail. You can go online and do lives. You can send video messages and, and text messages. You can send uh, photographs with text to people, but you have very little face-to-face -face contact. And you see, the gospel has to go to all the world. So God is the one that has to step in and do that which you and I cannot do. He has to end things, end wars, and end situations that prohibit or, or deter or limit the preaching of the gospel. And this is why you can trace back 30 years, maybe 35, and you can see country after country opening up for the preaching of the gospel. Country after country opening up for the preaching of, uh, to the gospel. And I say to that, praise be to God. I remember one of the things that Danny Shelton was told several years ago before, while he was going from place to place telling people that God had impressed him to build a television station, one that will reach the world with the undiluted three angels' messages. We're going back now from what I'm telling you to 1984, 1985. And I remember that somebody told Danny in the story, that's great that you want to do that, but how are you going to get into Russia where they have the Iron Curtain? And I understand, and then he gave the best answer he could. He says, I don't know. I have no idea. But that's not my problem. That's a problem for God. And brothers and sisters, there was no nuclear war between the U.S. And, and Russia or between other countries and Russia, nuclear war to end communism. Communism fell. And liberty to preach the gospel started in Russia, praise be to God. Country after country has been opening up for the preaching of the gospel. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. So this crisis will end, and we will have the liberty once again to go door to door and knock and study with people and pass out literature to people in the streets. The time will again come. Now is a time of preparation. Sanctify yourself. Consecrate your life to the Lord because He wants you to be happy. And, and when you do this, when you come to the Lord, give your heart fully to Him, you will understand that there is no peace in the world. There is only peace in the Lord. Now I want to take you through some in interesting scriptures that are found beginning in... 
Matthew 24, verse 33 and onward, but I'm going to give a little context by going to Matthew 24, verse 32. Because you will find the repetition of a couple of words here in many of the verses that we're going to read. And this reaches all the way to Matthew 25, and this is the main focus of what I want to share with you. Matthew 24, verse 32. Notice these words. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also will, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. So Matthew 24, verse 32 and 33, already we have these words that I want to point out to you. Two words, watch and know. You're going to see words, watch and pray, watch and know, or knew not. And so you and I today, as we study Matthew 24, I want you to focus on these words that Jesus is saying. Because there is a certain watching that must take place, preparation, and to be aware of what is going on. Not that you have to be uh, focusing on every little detail going on in the world, but the signs. Jesus said to learn a parable of the fig tree. When you see these signs, know that the coming is near, he says, at the doors. Let's look at verse 34. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Notice again, as we continue, the words, knows, watch, because you and I have, wa have to watch. And unfortunately, some people, as time has gone on, they have stopped watching, praying, staying close to the Lord. The things of life, the hustle and bustle of life has uh, occupied them with this and that. They're playing these video games, and they stay hours and hours doing that. They go on social media. They spend hours and hours on that. And when the time to go to sleep comes, or they're watching television, uh, some TV programs, comedies, movies, whatever it is, videos, when the time to go to sleep, oh, just a quick prayer and... You're out till the next day. And you rush again through life and dedicate very little time to the study of God's word, to prayer. And you and I, to be prepared for what's coming upon the end, have to do a lot more praying than some of us are doing now. Some people just pray. Some people just pray. When they wake up, thank you, Lord, for giving me life. That breakfast prayer, that prayer for lunch, that prayer for that supper, if you have it, or dinner, whatever you may call it, and prayer to go to sleep again. These little short prayers where you begin to connect with God and you disconnect before you actually really connect with the Lord. We have to go beyond that. We have to st spend time in prayer, in, in getting close to the Lord, because so many things that God wants to show us Teach us, help us to understand that we may be ready not only for the end time, but for the things we face from day to day. And believe me, I'm sure you have noticed that the devil is after you in one way or another. He's on your track because the Bible says he is as a, is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Now, who is easier to devour? Those that are watching or those that are sleeping? those that are sleeping. And if you're sleeping spiritually, it's time to wake up so that you're not destroyed by the devil. Let's continue. Notice the words watch and the words uh, know. Matthew 24, verse 36, and that word. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. What was going on then? Notice, for as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know 
until the flood came and took them away, took them all away, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. So will, be, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. So we see here that once again, there is a watching that must be done by the people of God so that they will know that the coming is near. You may not know the day nor the hour, but your heart will thrill to understand Jesus Christ is coming soon. And it does you no harm but good to be close to the Lord because in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. In the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. Let's continue now in Matthew 24, verse 40. Notice, two, then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Verse 41, two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Verse 42, watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. There's really nothing here about a secret rapture. This has to do with watch to be ready for the coming of the Lord. Well, some will say he will come as a thief in the night. Yes, but as we continue studying, you will see that for God's people, we will not be taken over as a thief. We will be ready for the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And there are great signs, trumpets sounding. The whole sky will be uh, illuminated with His glory. We will see it, hear it. It's a magnificent scene that stops everything. We don't have time to deal uh, too much with this aspect of it. But please notice that we are to watch, pray, and know that the coming is near. Verse 44, once again, says, Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. So we are to be ready. Matthew 24, let's go to verse 45. Notice, Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his master may, made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? We're going to continue to verse 45. 51, blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour that he is not aware of. He's not, he does not know. At an hour, he does not know. It's the same Greek word used here that in other places we have already read. says to know at an hour that he's not aware. So for those that are practicing evil, the coming of the Lord will be a surprise. But for those that are watching, praying, doing the Lord's will, they will be ready. They are anticipating the coming of the Lord. And it does not take him as a thief in the night. It is to them a relief. Yes, here he is. Praise God. We will be able to see, lo, here's our God. We waited for him and he will save us. So brothers and sisters, we are to know that the Lord is coming soon. Now, we're going to go quickly into Matthew 25. We can't really go through all the details of this because, again, we are supposed to watch and be ready. Notice what happens here in Matthew 25, verse 1 through 4. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. Now, this is interesting because all of them are virgins professing. In other words, they are professing a, a, uh, a pure faith. They all are looking for the bridegroom. But half of them, half of them were not prepared for the coming of the Lord because they did not do the necessary preparation. 
What was the preparation that the wise did that helped them be prepared when the master or the husbandman came? Notice, continuing on in Matthew chapter 25, uh, we go to verse 6 through 13. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for the lamps are out, are going out. They're on their way to go out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Now, let's stop here for a moment and notice what happened. You have these virgins. They all slumbered and slept. And it's a sad, sad thing that if, as you look at the churches, if you're talking about the church uh, today, professing to love the Lord, professing to have a pure religion, if half, uh, uh, if notice that they all asleep, they all fall asleep. But when the announcement is made that the bridegroom is coming, they all get up. But only five, the wise, are ready. Now, which one do you want to be? Among the wise or among the foolish? Those that were foolish were not able to enter in because they did not make the needful preparation. You and I have now time to make the needful preparation to be ready for the Lord's coming. This oil in the lamps is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. So the wise virgins made preparation by praying, watching, and being ready. So when the time came, if there was a, an apparent delay, and you can see that in the Scripture there is an apparent delay in the Lord's coming, an apparent delay. To us, you know, the Lord, in a way, sometimes when we want something to happen soon, we say, I just can't wait for such and such a thing. And I see, in a sense, the Lord with that same anticipation, I just can't wait to go get my children. But you and I have to do something to help in this situation, and that is we must preach the gospel. Because when the gospel is preached all over the world for a witness unto all nations, then the end shall come. So you and I need to make needful preparation. We need to make the needful preparation. Notice what happens when we fall asleep. In Matthew 13, something, another parable is told by Jesus that tells us of what happens when people fall asleep. Interesting. Uh, Matthew 13, verse 24 through 30. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. When the wheat and the tares are first growing up, it's difficult to tell which ones are the wheat, which ones are the tares. Somehow these individuals that came to look at what was planted, they were able to tell. Do you want us to gather the tares? They thought they could do this. But you see, if we look at this parable and consider that even in the church, those professing to be Christians, there are wheat and there are tares among the Christians. 
And how is it that that can be? You see, it says an enemy has done this, and some people come into the church that are not 100% converted. For some reason, they come in, they know somebody, or somebody says, come with me, or for some reason, they go, but they are not 100% giving their heart to the Lord. Something keeps them, the attraction of the world. And so while men sleep, while you are sleeping, the enemy has opportunity to do terrible harm in your life. So it is time to awake, I say, and watch and pray and be ready for what's coming upon the earth. Be ready for what's coming up in your life. Let's go to, back to Matthew chapter 25. In beginning in verse 6, again. And at midnight the cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. We're reading this for a reason. But the wise answered, No, lest there should not be enough for us and, and you. Go rather to those who sell, buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him. To the wedding and the door was shut. Now I want you to look at this scene. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. They appeared to know the Lord. But notice what happens in verse 12. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Verse 12. I do not know know you. You and I are to know the Lord. It is our privilege to know the Lord. We have the opportunity to know the Lord. And while you are uh, confined to your home, can't go to work because of this coronavirus thing and, and the crisis, or for whatever reason, you're stuck at home, take time to connect with the Lord. Give your heart completely to Him that you may have the joy of salvation in your heart each and every moment. Notice verse 13. It's connected to Matthew 24. Matthew 25 is connected to Matthew 24. Matthew 25 and 24 are connected. Remember that chapter divisions were added later. This is the same narrative. And this is why Matthew 25 verse 13 says... Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. So I say to you, it's time to wake up, watch, read the Scriptures, pray, and spend time with the Lord that you may be ready for whatever comes your way, whatever challenge comes your way. Now, I may be uh, speaking right now to someone that is uh, very, very sick. Now, because of the coronavirus, it may be something else. For you, the promise of the Lord is as well. I may be speaking to somebody that uh, has been away from the Lord for many years, such as this doctor. I read that I heard this, uh, I heard this video, uh, this doctor working in a, one of these hospitals, where the coronavirus, many, many patients, they were like overwhelmed. And there was a pastor that became a patient in that hospital. And every day that he was there, he would be singing and reading the scriptures. And he had a smile on his face. And the nurses would come and the doctors would come. He would struggle breathing, but he was saying, praise the Lord. He was encouraging and the doctor would come and he was just amazed at the uh, this pastor's faith, he was elderly, but he was clinging to the Lord. This pastor was faithful to the end. And this doctor was able to say, I have separated myself from the Lord long ago. But this pastor awakened in me a desire to have what he had, that in the face of death, he was happy in the Lord, knowing that Jesus was with him until the end. He said, the, the pastor died, but he changed my life. 
There are things going on in this world because of the coronavirus. And it's amazing the things that can happen when a crisis comes. I want to take you to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1 through 6. 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 6. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. There are some people that know the times and the seasons about the coming of the Lord. Notice verse 2. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. Many Christians know that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. But notice, verse 3, For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them, as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. Praise God. We do not have to be overtaken as a thief. Notice, this day does not have to overtake us as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. Praise be to God. So I encourage you that whatever your condition is, get closer and closer to the Lord. If you have been... Uh, worldly minded, uh, had not been reading your Bible, uh, drifting further and further away from the Lord, it's time to come nearer to the Lord because the Lord loves you, wants you to be happy. And the reality is that you cannot find true happiness in anything or in any place in this world if the Lord is not with you. In Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 through 14, Ephesians chapter 5, Actually, I just want to read Ephesians chapter 5. Let us begin in verse 13. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 13. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. Praise the Lord. So this is a call to awake out of sleep and Christ will give you light. Brothers and sisters, it's time to awake out of sleep. This coronavirus, there are some things going on and some people are realizing that changes have to be made. Changes have to be made. I want to talk to you about some of these presidents in some of these countries and uh, leaders of government that are beginning to make expressions that are letting you know that they are beginning to understand that they cannot control this, that they need help from above, from God. The Prime Minister of uh, Italy, with tears in his eyes, said, we have lost the battle against the coronavirus. We have lost control. Only God can help us. This is a leader in this nation, the prime minister of Italy. In uh, Paraguay, the president said, I have faith in God and in his power and his mercy and then he quoted Isaiah 41, verse 10. Another president, and uh, I'm not here to talk about politics. I'm just underlining some of the things that some of these presidents are saying. In the, the U.S. president, Donald Trump, declared on March 15th a day of prayer. And recently, President Trump urged everyone to pray for the families who have lost loved ones. And all the heroes fighting through the coronavirus crisis, he said... We may be apart. We can use this time to turn to reflection and prayer. This is the president of a nation. And he says, with the faith of our families and the spirit of our people and the grace of our God, we will endure. We will overcome. We will prevail. Panama, the president of that country, asked the people in Panama to pray and then gave some instruction on how to pray. 
Interesting. In Guatemala, I heard this president say he called upon the people of Guatemala to pray for the people, pray for the country. And he said, I am asking the people of Guatemala to spend this coming Saturday. This is what the video said, to spend this coming Saturday in fasting and prayer for our country. The president of Guatemala. El Salvador, he has asked all the believers in his country to pray for his country, to pray for the country and the world. Then the president of El Salvador bowed his head in silent prayer. And I saw this president in prayer silently for a while. Then another camera view was showed and he was actually in a room. There was a long table and people seated and they were spaced apart by some distance. There were at least 30 people in the room. And this president of this country spent that time in prayer and then finally said amen. So what is going on? What is going on? Presidents, leaders of countries are beginning to realize we, this is not something we can handle. We need help from God. Interestingly enough, Cuba. Recently, the Cuban government said that they are allowing several Christian pastors to present a 15-minute message during the week of April 5 through the 12th. And they also allow the Catholic Church to present a Mass. Now, what I am saying to you is that they allowed them 15-minute message during the week of April 5 to 12th this year, 2020, 2020, so that the people will be encouraged. See, the church people in Cuba also cannot go to churches. They cannot meet together. They have limited internet service, and they cannot have these, uh, as we are having in many places, uh, churches connecting with each other through some type of live, trans uh, live streaming service. In Cuba, they cannot do that. So the country allowed the pastors from different denominations to present a 15-minute message on the national TV channel of Cuba owned by the government. Praise the Lord. So brothers and sisters, uh, what does this mean? Now, I hope that all of these people, this will be a seed in their life that will, that will in their heart, that will sprout to everlasting life. This is my hope. It may be that after all this is over, some of these leaders will be like the Pharaoh. When the crisis is over, when the plagues are gone, they go back to being rebellious, they go back to doing wickedly, but for now, something is going on, and we should be praying for the leaders of these countries, for all the leaders of the countries, to give their hearts to the Lord. In Daniel chapter 12, verse 10, we have this message. Many shall be purified and made white and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Brothers and sisters, it is high time for people to awake out of sleep. It is time to listen to the words of Jesus because uh, uh, this crisis will be over. And we must be prepared to take advantage of the hearts that have been made sensitive to God and to the gospel. When doors are allowed to open and people go, from, uh, go back to their usual uh, uh, things, some will go back to whatever they were doing, but some hearts, seeds have been planted. Hearts have been made tender. And it is time for God's people to be prepared so that the words of Jesus in Matthew 28, 18 to 20 will once again be alive in your heart. Jesus said, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that we have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world, to the end of the age. Brothers and sisters, the coronavirus is but a wake-up call to give your heart to the Lord. I encourage you to give your heart completely to Him. 
watch and know the time that we are living in. In the book, Testimonies to Ministers, page 444, I'd like to read these words to you. We now hear, we hear now of earthquakes in diverse places, of fires, of tempests, of disasters by sea and land, of pestilence, of famine. What weight do these signs have upon you? This is only the beginning of what shall be. The description of the day of God is given through John by the Revelator. The cry of the terror-stricken myriads has fallen upon the ear of John. The great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? The apostle himself was awed and overwhelmed. I encourage you to give heed, get up, watch and pray. In Testimonies, volume 5, page 717, study your Bible as you have never studied before. Unless you arise to a higher, holier state in your religious life, you will not be ready for the appearing of our Lord. As great light has been given, God expects corresponding zeal, faithfulness, and devotion on the part of His people. There must be spirituality, a deeper consecration unto God, and a zeal in His work that has never yet been reached. Much time should be spent in prayer that our garments of character may be washed and made white in the blood of the Lamb. Brothers and sisters, praise God. You see in Revelation chapter 7, verse 1 and 2, that there are four angels holding the four winds until God's people are sealed. We are living in the sealing time. I encourage you to give your heart completely to the Lord. He is waiting for you, knocking at the door of your heart, Open the door to Him, and He will come in and begin peace and happiness in your life. God bless you.